This was considered funny back in 1967. The devil made me buy this dress. But seriously, it's not a laughing matter. It is absolutely dangerous. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. When I look at much of the evil that has plagued this world for decades, centuries, and and millennia, the only way to do to even begin to explain it is to understand that there is truly evil in this world. Yes, there is a devil, there is a Satan. There is a legion of demons. And many, many play in occult-like activities and invite them in, sometimes unknowingly. We look at parts of our own government that no longer can be trusted because they're, they're incapable of telling the truth. My guest today is the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales. We're going to be talking probably today and tomorrow about evil, about sin, and what we can do about it. And I want to start with this premise. When you look at some of those that are in our political realm today, even those that claim to be conservative, I wonder how many of those individuals, regardless of what comes out of their mouth, I wonder, Dr. Gales, are any of these individuals potentially compromised because of sin? Uh, Absolutely. Not that everybody is just this liar and that's all they can think of is lying Uh, but many are compromised and what I mean by that is there are others who hold things over your head and and you know the fear of being exposed for whatever it may be we get the phrase skeletons in the closet from that the fear of whatever it may be um, compromises people's integrity and you bet you they'll lie they'll lie cheat steal whatever to keep their uh, their secret a secret So that's a tactic that's been used since the beginning. Rome used it all the time, ancient Rome, uh, with senators and and people in power. If they could find you in a compromising situation, they would expose it unless you did their bidding. Uh, But it's much worse today, right? We have video. We have cameras. Oh, we got got Facebook. (laughs) We got Facebook recordings, everything. We got, you know, hidden cameras. We've got it all. I mean, my... uh, what they had in World War II with film they can't even begin to touch what we can do today electronically right. and with surveillance. You know, that's why the the thing that bothers me, you know, we can, I can talk and we'll get into it, I'm sure, next week sometime as we learn more about what happened in Nashville, as we get into the presidential politics on the, ironically, on Epiphany, the 6th of, of January, We'll have a better idea of of just how destroyed our nation is because you know you know and I know that any when you got a when you got the stuff we've seen with voting that doesn't add up like I, I said yesterday when you mail out 1.8 million ballots and get 2.5 million back that doesn't sound right to me and and you can sit there and say oh it's just fine how. The, the, it's a miracle, Bob. It's it, a miracle. I know. I mean, it's like the loaves and fishes for right. for, for Biden votes, you know. Yeah. And so I, I look at this and, oh, uh, they sent everybody out. And oh, those were legit ballots that have been stored there all day long before the polls closed, all opened up, not even folded, ready to be scanned in, in Georgia. Of course, I believe Georgia has a very compromised governor and an extremely compromised Secretary of State whose brother makes his big money off the Chinese Communist Party. So right. there, there's some issues there. But but when you get into the world we live in now and we see the kind of deceit that goes on in, in corporations, large corporations, when you see the deceit going on in government, when you see the deceit going on even in business, we, we've we've come to a new low, I think, in terms of our moral integrity as a people. I mean, look, we've always had bad people, bank robbers. You know, we can look over our history. But overall, most people had a social conscience. And what I mean by that is you, you didn't curse in public. You didn't 
drop f bombs in restaurants. You know, you respected people. We've even lost that. We don't even have those controls anymore. We've lost all control circuitry over our mouths and 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 our actions. Where does that come from? Right. So, you know, we had a a moral and religious people in this country as a general cultural uh, aspect. And it came from all the different churches, all the different religious groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was we were a religious people and, you know, different denominations, so on and so forth. But that was the backbone of our morality, our moral basis and and even the Constitution. And even as Jewish people came into this country, we still had the Judeo Christian ethic, you know, of the Ten Commandments. Well, you have that hanging up Moses right behind the Supreme Mm -hmm. Court, hanging up on the wall. Um, And today, of course, they tell you it's not the Ten Commandments. He's holding up the Bill of Rights. I mean, come on. How ridiculous. But aside from that, yes, it was a moral and religious people. And what you have to do to a culture in order to change it the way it has been changed is to gut that religious aspect out of it. Mm -hmm. Start separating it from every aspect of the state. Uh, and that's that's what we've seen incrementally happening um, since even before the 60s. But it kicked off pretty hard mm-hmm. in the 60s. And then prayer was taken out of school. And so, I mean, I know I work with a lot of elderly people. Right. And I know elderly people now. If I tell them, you know, when you were in public school, did you start the day off reading a scripture passage and praying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they said, absolutely. Every oh, yeah. day. Every day. Imagine if the school did that today. Uh, you know, but even the Pledge of Allegiance is is yep. is forbidden. They would read a passage. She said, usually with Psalms or something from the Gospel, and then they would say the the Lord's Prayer or something. Uh, you know, and everyone would pray, and that was the beginning of your day in public school. Right after then, then came the pledge. Sure, you know, and and they they removed it. They removed even the Ten Commandments from hanging up in school because mm-hmm. the Supreme Court, court and I'll I'll quote it kind of loosely. They said, if you look at it, you might meditate on it, and that would constitute religion. So yeah, thou shalt not kill. That's that's a terrible concept for us to have. Absolutely. Or I should say, if you really do it correctly uh, from the Hebrew, thou shalt do no murder is what it boils. You know, thou shalt not murder is what it really means. Yep. Yep. So those things were taken from a, and, and then you have a vacuum, a spiritual vacuum, because by nature, man is spiritual. Whether you want to deny that all you want or not, mm-hmm. you cannot get away from it. Um, even in 1918 and the Bolshevik Revolution, when they tried to totally get rid of religion and then you had World War Two and Stalin's troops were abandoning they were leaving in 20, 30, 40,000 at a time, abandoning his his troops and the front lines because he was destroying all the churches. You know what mm-hmm. he did? Smart man. He brought the religion back and he allowed churches, of course, under his rule, but he allowed them to continue, allowed them to start praying for the troops. And guess what? That was it. The troops said, hey, we'll stay and fight now. Mm-hmm. So he just learned you can't get rid of religion. But you got to control it from the inside, which is what the deep state would love to do in this country. You you and I have talked about this at length, and this is there are a couple of things I want to get into. Um, This will probably end up being into into tomorrow's program. I can always already see this. There's a lot we need to understand. We'll get we'll get to Nashville. We'll get to all of this stuff maybe by next week when we. I'd rather have a clear understanding before I speculate, but this much we're not speculating on. Mm -hmm. What is the influence that causes a Nashville explosion? It's certainly not rationale. It's certainly not, you know, God and country, uh, or or someone may may try to say some deranged Trump supporter. That is, it's not that at all. Why that building and all that? We'll get into it next week. But what causes people to act? the way they do today what what i've always said a lot of people are out there talking about the spirit and and sometimes it's not the holy spirit that they're following it's a familiar spirit that they are following and and i think that we are seeing the spirit of antichrist just dominating across what used to be the christian western world you know and and now Europe is a basket case. Let's be honest. I mean, it's a spiritual dead basket case that has been that's replaced this new age thought and religion 
is what drives them today. And, and look at what it's giving us. Yeah, it's a vacuum, a spiritual vacuum. And it's not even just a, uh, a just a new age religion, mm-hmm. because that, that constitutes a polytheistic multiple religion view. It's an ideology and a philosophy under the heading of Luciferianism which is often looked at as a philosophy and an ideology. Uh Uh, It it, it predates Christianity. It goes back to a lot of the pagan religions, which is, in essence, what New Age takes. Yeah, like Moloch is a good example. Absolutely, absolutely. And what what is Moloch famous for? He wants to have you sacrifice your newborn baby so you can have prosperity and happiness in your life. And you Mm -hmm. just dance and sing, and you won't even hear the baby scream as he burns or she burns to death. Yes, uh, exactly. So expediency is the goal. And part of Luciferianism is, is about freedom of will. And worshiping um, the inner self, right, Mm -hmm. what you desire, which is just what you said there. So freedom of will, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Who said that? That was written in Aleister Crowley's book um, called The Law. And Aleister Crowley, if if people don't know who he was, he was a British uh, MI5 individual who is also a Satanist, called Uh himself the most wickedest man alive. Um, And he practiced magic, more of an Egyptian Luciferianism. Uh, But he was high in the government and he was a drug guy. Anyway, all of our rock and roll groups all look to Crowley as an influence, believe it or not, in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And and that's, you know, that's what we, we see today. So Crowley had a huge, huge influence on the satanic yeah, or the Satanism. Yeah, post, the post-World War II generation. Yep. Absolutely. And we see it in many facets, not just music, but art, literature. All of that is connected, and all of that is what has shaped the mind and the will of the people since then. And the educational system, our public education system, is beholden to this philosophy. Yeah, because these individuals then went and became teachers in the school, and then principals, and then, you know, on the board. Administrators. Yep. And so what you have is you have this philosophy being taught in school. Look, and at the look, same time, when you and I came along, when you you and I came along, you had these wonderful textbook companies that these are all literally I I am convinced are owned by Luciferians, the ones Absolutely. that produces textbooks. Every one of well, them. There is a uh, a textbook, well, there's actually a bookstore in the United Nations called Lucis Trust. Lucis Trust used to be called Lucifer Trust, but because that name sounded so scary, yeah. they had to change it to Lucis Trust. And in that bookstore in the United Nations, it's still there. You know, Annie Besant and Bailey and all of these individuals who were mystics and writers, they all sell their books in there. Now, they're They've passed away, but their books are very much a philosophy of the United Nations, Mm. which which in in its heart is a Luciferian pre-Christian pagan uh, religion. You know, I'm I'm glad you you mentioned that in in religion. A thought occurred to me when you and I were talking and I just did some quick looking up and and how how these satanic practices, uh, whether we realize them or not have worked their way into some of our churches today in the world. And some of these practices are dangerous. You know, you you pointed out before that so much of Luciferianism is about me and how yep. I feel. It, it, it is a very, you know, I, it's a, you call it a philosophy, but you're selling your soul to have it all about me and my yep. power and my greatness and my glory and 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 I, I was thinking about oh several years ago I'm thinking maybe 2015 early 2016 there was a church in California that got caught and and they made a big deal that oh no no we're not doing it but the truth is when you look at it later uh, like toward the end of 2017 Bethel Church out in California you know they were getting into literally. Uh, the equivalent of tarot cards, you know, as mm-hmm. you, you remember that, you know, get, yep. it, which yep. is nothing more than spiritual adultery is what they were getting sure. themselves into. And, and, and this kind of stuff, look, there's a lot of 
new Christian music that I like. But when the songs are not about Jesus Christ and his father and his kingdom, and when it's all about me and my feelings and how I feel and how I want to know you more like a slobbery boyfriend, you're getting into spiritual idolatry and and very dangerous. You know, it's it's literally like fornicating with Baal is what it boils down to. Well, early in the church, you know, the church really would sing the psalms. They were part of the church's chant, and that Mm -hmm. was it. Hymns came in around the 300s and 400s. But guess guess who was the big promoter of hymnology? And I'm not saying hymns are all bad. They're not, but they have to have good theology. The promoter of hymns was Arius. So Arianism brought in hymnology, and they did it so they could bring in their theology. Isn't it interesting that one of the easiest ways to bring in error is through the song, is through the hymns? The catchy and tune and words. Sure. And, and, and look, we, we know the that. melodies are, uh, that you know, I, I'm not so much a problem person with melody and style as I am with content and purpose. You know, I mean, you know, the music they sang in the year 300 or the year 100 or the year 55 would be very foreign to our ears today. And it's it just wouldn't work. But it's the it's what you're singing about. It, you know, you're using That's right. Music is like a carrier. It brings it brings you something and it can bring you either a, quali- a good message or a bad one. What did Led Zeppelin say? Let the music be your master right now. Mm-hmm. If we look at that, music, I'll give you, let's say, George Harrison. You know, he used to sing a song called My Sweet Lord. Mm -hmm, But it's all about uh, Krishna. My Sweet Lord. And then he would go right into Hare Krishna. Krishna, Mm -hmm. You know, and meanwhile, he's got you. You're singing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And next thing you know, you're singing Hare Krishna. But the music's got you. That's the power of music. Plato knew it. He wrote about it in the Republic. Um, This has always been. And what we have to understand is, in the Bible, when it talks about the creation of, of Satan, of Lucifer, the light bearer, who walked in the mountain of God with him, it says that he was created with pipes and tabrets in his very being. And that's musical instruments. So we know an- angels sing, angels are musical beings, and Satan, Lucifer, was created with pipes and tablets mm-hmm. in his very mm-hmm. being. If that is the case, what do you think might be his number one way of deception? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm looking at I'm looking at the lyrics right now of my sweet Lord, and I'm gonna I remember back in 1970 because I was in high school and I was just starting my radio career. Hard to believe. But I, I remember going to a place called Lovin near Ithaca, New York, and it was founded by a guy named Scott Ross, who was a former, he was from Scotland, and he was a rock and roll disc jockey that, you know, became a Christian. And I remember being in his studio and, and watching, quote him, produce his national radio show, and he's playing this song hoping that this is the lyrics where he's getting saved or something. And then I'm looking at these lyrics now, and and th- this is a cross between bad theology, horrible theology, and meism, uh, all in one. It's like my sweet Lord, my Lord, you've heard it all. I really want to see you. I really want to be with you. I really want to see you. You know, in other words, it almost sounds like today's contemporary Christian. Lord, I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to feel you. I want to be with you, and they never say his name. It's just it's just some thing out there, some, you know, cosmic muffin. Who knows? And then you look at the rest of this. My sweet Lord, I really want to know you and, and I really want to go with you. I really want to show you, Lord, that it won't take long, my Lord. And then it goes on. And then before you know it, you're right. We get into, you know, after we've done all the Christian sounding stuff, really want to know you, Lord, and show you, Lord, then it's. My Lord, Hare Krishna starts coming in after the hallelujah. We have, you know, that we sing hallelujah all the way to the second half of the song, and then it switches to Hare Krishna. And, you know, yep. and 
And hare hare. So, so music is a way to bring in deception. Guru and Brahma. I, I mean, before, you know. It's, it, yep, yep. Guru it's Vishnu. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28 that talks about Satan talks about the king of Tyre, but we also know that it's referring to Satan as well Mm -hmm. um, in the passage, right? So in in verse 13, thou thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, Mm -hmm. sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and gold. And then it says, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes Mm -hmm. was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. So we know that musical instruments were created in the very angelic being Mm -hmm. of Satan. Uh, we we have to understand that because that shows us the line between culture and art, literature, music. All of those things impact culture and can either build it up or tear it down. Mm-hmm. And if we don't know that, we get we get moved into the culture. I always laugh and say, you remember the '60s with with you know, do your own thing, drop out, mm-hmm. turn on, tune in, you know, all of these things. And they were all saying, "Hey, man, I'm just doing my own thing, man." But they all had flowers in their hair and mm-hmm. bell bottoms and fringe jacket. <laughs> you know, they all looked the same, dressed the same, but but they were doing their own thing, man. No. You were following a script, a crowd. You were given a a plate to choose from, and that was it. So who handed out that plate? And and again, I'm willing to say that is not only a spiritual backing to that, but it's also the deep state, what Mm -hmm. we would call deep state, CIA, the intelligence agencies. They were reshaping our culture back then. And there's a spiritual reason, right? Because Mm -hmm. even the music was leading us to rebellion, rebellion against authority, rebellion against parents. Yet then you had this wonderful sounding song, My Sweet Lord. You know, the parents Mm -hmm. of that day, they'd hear the the beginning, oh yeah, great song. Worshiping Jesus, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until you realize that the second half of the song, there's a Hare Krishna mantra referred to yep. as the Maha Mantra, which is a 16-word mantra. And yep. when you look at My Sweet Lord, the second half of that song is the 16-word entire mantra yep. and in its entirety. It. And you're singing it because you it just subtly changed from, because, from hallelujah yeah, to Hare Krishna. Krishna. And you're going, I really want to see you. <laughs> who, who are you really wanting to see? You know, right. th- th- this is why, you know, I, I I have this what I call warfare with bad theology. I mean, I, and, and I mean, look, I, I can not like what I call bad music, but I will not tolerate uh, non-Christ centered or, you know, God-centered, Holy Spirit-inspired lyrics. I mean, I don't need to be celebrating a war goddess, a fertility god, or anything else, you know, hidden in your music. So Uh, in the church, we have sin defined in two ways, okay? The sin of commission, when we commit sin, by lying, stealing, whatever. And then there's the sin of omission. Mm Mm-hmm. When we don't say what needs to be said, we leave things out that define things better. And that's what we see in the music today. Have you noticed that in much of the modern church, I mean, we're getting all over the road, but I think our listeners will follow why over today and tomorrow, why we are doing this. And I think it's important because we're going to get into some really dangerous things that are around us. Now, we can talk about the new world order all we want, but it's... It runs deeper than just that. Yes. It's not just the politics of men. It's not just governmental politics putting together a world government. Mm -hmm. It's very spiritual. But the question is, whose spirit? You know, you go back when I when I go back a few years ago and and you got to remember, this is like finally the truth comes out in 2017 but you know you had bethel church they were doing things called destiny cards you know and and henna tattoos and and new age gemstone practices and and they're trying to say that oh oh, no they're we're we're we're, we're making them christ center now we're 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 taking them back and this is supposedly one of those 
contemporary churches with the all about me kind of music, right. it, it's scary. Well, because we are in a culture of me, right? Me centered. What I used uh-huh. to say to people, we've all met those people who do nothing but talk about themselves, right? And and then the eventually they, I always joke, they eventually they stop and they say, okay, enough about me. Why don't you talk about me yeah. for a little while? Yeah, <laughs> you know, pretty much. And you sit back, you go, oh my goodness. But you know, we are so into self, do for your own self, all that other stuff. We even have a magazine called Self Magazine. I, I figure it's only a matter of time before we just have a magazine with a mirror as a cover. Mm. You know, that's it because it's all about me, right? Everything's about me, my happiness. You hear that word all the time. And how what many, look, how many preachers now in some of these churches have, this is, it's a pep talk. It's makes, you know, what worries me, and I've known people in my own family, they'll say, well, I went to church today and the worship and praise time was was okay, but I, I just really didn't get into it. I didn't feel anything. Mm. And then I'm asking, you know, so that, but the songs are, you might as well, you know, there's an old country song. Uh, let's talk about me. I mean, this is what, what yep. it, but it wasn't enough about me today. It wasn't, it wasn't as said, the spotlight wasn't on me today and how I feel today. And well, right. What I can get out of it is what I hear. Well, let me mm-hmm. tell you something. You're not you don't go to get out of it. You go to give. And if you get something out of it, praise God. But you go to church to give worship to the Lord, to give glory to the Lord. And in doing that, it's a symbiotic relationship. He meets you where you are and he mm-hmm. brings healing and grace to you. And you may get some happiness and joy out of it for a little bit. But the fact of the matter is it's not what you go for. Right. And and because our culture pushes that, we have totally distorted the meaning of church. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God has to do this for me or God is going to make me happy or wealthy and wise. Like, uh, you know, this is what we feel is mm-hmm. the church now. Everything's about feeling. Well, look, in the scripture, the Bible says that you are but dust and, and God pities you. Imagine that. God calls you a clotted dirt. Mm-hmm. How's that for your self-esteem? Yeah. You know, we we, we look, at, look at today's. I, I know we. I didn't plan to hop off on this. We're going to pull it back together again in a couple of minutes after our break coming up, and move on to something equally as important. But you know, we've allowed our churches, too many of them, to act worldly. And you know, when you have some singer with a light spotlight on them and a drum set behind a plexiglass, you know, noise protector. And, and they're wearing skinny blue jeans and wailing into a microphone like they're singing to a boyfriend under a spotlight. And you're not even singing. You're just, you know, just uh, as I shared one time from that one of my favorite funny videos, you know, you're swaying to the music like a Phil Collins concert or something like that. How is that truly worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life on a cross for you to give you victory over sin, Satan and the grave? I mean, they're making fun of them. Sure. But not only that, there's something eerily similar to that type of music and the reaction that we see Uh in indigenous cultures, whether it's in Australia or Uh, Africa. Africa, Uh, And at at the very beat of the music, the swaying, all of these things are extremely religious. Many, many parts of the Caribbean uh, are are infested with this. Yep. And, These, and so it's a connection is what we're saying. There's a connection here in the culture and in the church. But where's the spirit it's coming mm-hmm. from? What is the spirit it's coming from? And has it infected other things like our politics, like hey, our it has. today? It ha- I mean, listen, there, there are churches today, you know, where they don't preach against sin anymore. If anything, they celebrate it. They spotlight it. They want you to achieve it. I mean, this is ridiculous, but we have apostate churches out there that are literally, they're, they're, they're seducing people directly into hell. That's what they're doing. Sure. Well, because that's it. And uh, what we need to do is wake up and we need to wake people up and we need mm-hmm. to give them eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the church, not the spirit of the world, which Paul contrasts for us. You know, we we have something, and I know we got to go to a break. And when we come back, we're moving into a really important direction that I think we need to alert you to. 
And, and that is the rise of witchcraft in this country. And then we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Have you ever noticed in a lot of these contemporary churches how many people, you know, they're, they're still getting tattoos? You know, have you ever never noticed that? It's mm-hmm. still like it's like the thing to do. And we forget, and I think we, we have been so misinformed. Look, I know a lot of soldiers back in World War II. They got the little American fr- flag or mom or whatever, and, and most of it out of ignorance. But, you know, in Leviticus, he, God told his people, do not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. I am the Lord. And, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of these people, we, we do tattoos that really summon up the spirits of the dead. And you can be, Lord, look, the Lord can forgive you of anything. So don't think that you've condemned yourself. But we, we are the rise in young people wanting tattoos and parents signing off on it is becoming, frankly, very scary to me. This has been going on for quite a while. I mean, and, and our churches, our culture and those that want to enslave us are using all these things to make us feel good about ourselves to be our own detriment. We'll be right back. We got to take a break. We went a little bit long on this segment, but we shall return and we're going to talk about why would, why would witchcraft be rising in the western world of all places. We may understand it. We would think, "Oh, only in, you know, some of the other uh, less developed countries, but no, it's becoming very powerful here in the United States, Canada, Great Britain and all across Europe." This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to the Thursday edition, by the way, the New Year's Eve edition of Truth to Ponder. Ironically, Depending upon the signal, you might be hearing it when it's already the new year of 2021, as some stations do air it late, and uh, we do cross a few time zones along the way. Today, we're talking about some very important topics we're going to get into in just a moment. You know, the occult, witchcraft, uh, this all ties into the new age, the one world government, the one world religion. It is all intertwined Uh, during the break. Uh, Dr. Gales and I were talking, and he, he mentioned, you know, we can talk about the coronavirus numbers that are right, wrong, indifferent, uh, inflated. We can talk about the bombing in in Nashville. We'll talk about it more next week as more comes out, and I'll feel more comfortable in sharing some of the things that you know, I've, I've been made privy to, but I'm not certain of. And, and if you know me, I'm not going to mislead you. If I tell you something... You can be rest assured that I am thoroughly convinced and I'm not speculating any longer. Well, tomorrow is going to be an exciting day um, for this program. We add a new radio station to our mix at the beginning of this new year. And that's KVOH coming out of Los Angeles, a shortwave station. Its coverage will get us into Mexico, uh, the southeastern United States and Florida, where we kind of miss that area overshoot it from Florida, from WRMI, and even into the entire Caribbean. And I know this conversation we're having about occultish things uh, will be on. We'll, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow, I am certain. And, 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 and I'm just thinking here as I'm getting ready to bring Dr. Gales back that, you know, we're, we're, we're coming right into the belly of the beast with this coming into the Caribbean. And the program also will be airing uh, over the weekend on a station in Africa, the Voice of Hope facility that covers about 80% of the continent with a wonderful signal uh, from South Africa all the way up to the Mediterranean Sea. doesn't quite get into the Middle East, but the uh, entire continent from west to east, all of Central and all of South Africa, and up to those nations in the northwestern part of the continent. So we, we look forward to that time. I want to remind you that the shortwave time is not free. I don't charge for my time, but I do have to write a check for shortwave time, and I need to raise some to keep uh, everybody happy. 
And if you'd be so kind, and if you want to help, you can go to the website, which is truth2ponder.com, truth2ponder.com. You can help us from there. If you want to mail a check, you can send it to to me. Just make the check out to Ancient Word Radio. That's Ancient Word Radio. And as we get into early next year, I'll be telling you a lot more about a couple of projects that are right now being developed that I think are very important. And uh, I think you'll be excited. None of, none, none of what you give when it comes for this program's purpose goes to that. Everything that you send keeps this particular radio show on shortwave. Everything else we've got covered in other ways. So just so you know. Um, and if you want to send a check, you can mail it to 21 Berkshire, B-E-R-K-S-H-I-R-E, 21 Berkshire Lane, Add number 263, our little P.O. box here in the mountains uh, that they use. And that's the city of Sky Valley, two words, Sky Valley, Georgia, 30537. I'll give the address uh, before the end of the broadcast today. The Reverend Dr. Timothy Gale is with me as uh, we haven't talked to each other since before Christmas. So it's exciting to have you back on as we end this very strange year of 2020. And... You were sharing with me the other day uh, some material about the rise of of witchcraft. And, you know, you'd think that, oh, we're such a modern society. Who believes that stuff anymore? Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. And, you know, and a lot of atheists, you know, the, you know, the ones that say, oh, you you Christians that believe in your dumb sky god. You've heard that before, I'm sure. And yeah. yeah and and. Yet, what is the spirit that is really leading even some people that claim to be atheist? I mean, think about it. Yeah, you're you're looking at. Again, I told you that the there is we're spiritual beings, so we live in now in a spiritual vacuum. So everything's trying to fill it. You mm-hmm. know, G.K. Chesterton said it's it's not a concern to him that you you believe in nothing. It's the fact that now you're going to believe in anything, and that is what we see. So. TV shows, you know, I we live in an age that I have termed a perpetual Halloween. Mm-hmm. We no longer just have Halloween for a day. Now we have zombie movies and we have vampire books and we we have Wiccan religion. And that is supposed to be white magic, a good religion. But there is a dark Wiccan religion, a mm-hmm. black magic all of these things are hugely popular. Instagram, um, you know, Twitter, people, and especially the age group of women between the ages of like 12 and 30 something. Uh, Wicca is a huge, huge religion where today we are told, I saw an article recently, that there are more Wiccan witches than there are Presbyterians. Wow. In this country. So the church is asleep at the wheel in many ways. We're fighting things here and there like Harry Potter or the book. Those things we've we've fought in a way. But let me tell you something. It is honeycombed itself into every facet of our society. And I don't think most Christians even know what to look for. The obvious thing, if somebody's wearing a witch outfit walking down the street, okay, there's a witch we know. But other than that, how do you know it's not your local pharmacist mm-hmm. or, or you know, and Satanism, it's all part of it. And they're out there and they're multiplying in droves. And let me tell you something right now, they have a better evangelistic program than we do. Mm. They do. So They do. And, and, and then it's an easy sell for them. You know, let's think about it. If you go back to the first century of the church, there were no basketball courts. There was no pizza night for the youth. There was none of that. There was none of this, you know, oh, let's have some special music and entertainment for the youth. We, did, we didn't do that. They didn't bring pizza and Coca-Cola in or any of that stuff and ice cream socials. Mm-hmm. They, they were selling the fact you could be a martyr for Christ. You might yeah. die for your faith. That's what they were selling. And you want to know something? Back in those days, young people signed up. They, The power of the Holy Spirit led them into this relationship with Jesus Christ where they knew that this life is only a part of who we are. And the things we do for and with Christ are the things that last in the, in, in eternity. And not, not, our, not our just, you know, self, 
gratification and satisfaction. Yeah. So what are we looking at? We're looking at um, witchcraft, open witchcraft, no longer Mm -hmm. hiding behind things, coming out and dominating our youth and our society. And Christians don't know how to handle it. They mm-hmm. don't know what to do. They, they think this is stuff of movies. They think this is stuff of, of shows that, that were out there, uh, you know, that we watch uh, at night at home. But that's not the case. It is, it is now your neighbor and the neighbor's mm-hmm. kids and, and those who are actually doing spells, learning the implements of witchcraft, which you may not even recognize your kids have in their house. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one thing to have a lucky rabbit's foot at one time in the past. You know, now they have wands, they have amulets, they have all of these things that they set up in their rooms and most parents don't even know what it is. So they don't even look twice at it. They don't think about Uh, it. But these things in witchcraft, these things have an attachment We have attachments on items. We have infestation in rooms and homes. Mm -hmm. We have attachments on people. But but how do you know if you don't know what to look for? And I venture to say right now Mm -hmm. that there are many people that you probably know or have walked past who have these very things. And you have no idea. You know, look, in, in my day growing up, you know, the biggest thing, and, and it is a very dangerous thing, was the Ouija board. You know, they, they were around, and, and I saw one, I dealt with one briefly, and it just, you know, I guess maybe I was like 11 or 12, and it was just really creepy, and I never wanted to get near one again. Right. And, and because I guess my, shall I, for lack of a better term, my Christian upbringing uh, just made me feel incredibly uncomfortable with this. It just didn't. It was like get you know get away from here. Well, yeah. that's the key, as we talked about, and as you said before, we've lost that generally in our society. You know, the spirit came to to convict the world of sin mm-hmm. and righteousness, right? So we don't have that anymore. That discernment is gone as a as a Christian consensus. Mm-hmm. So now we're open to all these things, and Satan always masquerades as an angel of light. He always comes in and and sows these seeds. You know, the early church fathers, I call them the desert fathers in the third, fourth century, they they said in the end times that we're going to be fighting the demons openly. And I think we're there. We're there. Yep. And and, and look, they're in politics now. They, they run for office. Let's be honest about it. They are literally getting up. And I really they have there are people, I believe, in the Congress of the United States and the Senate, in some of the highest places appointed in government, that are truly occultist. They really are. They, they, they put on a great act for you. They might even come to your church if they're looking for a vote. But yep. their, their commitment to Christ is non-existent. And you know them by their fruits. You know, let's look at the age we came up in. You know, back in 1967, I can remember when the album came out. I, I owned it. For many, many years. Sergeant Peppers, remember that one? Mm, yep. The Beatles. And, you know, the, the, it was, you know, it was like the soundtrack to the summer, or whatever. Yet when you it it was pushing marijuana, LSD, and even some, well, satanic influence. Look at look at the cover of the album. Uh, guess well, who's on the cover? Yeah. Al- Alistair Crowley. Yes. Alistair Crowley is on the cover. And who's Sergeant Pepper? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. And it goes all the way back to then. You know, you talked about politicians. A good friend of mine, um, his name is Ralph Sarchi. He he is a was a former New York City cop and he right. is the one who wrote the book Deliver Us from Evil, which became a movie in twenty fourteen. Um, Ralph Sarchi is a friend of mine. And I, I've talked to him about a lot of these things, and he's encountered the demonic. But he himself would say that there are certain politicians that he is convinced are perfectly possessed. I want you, if you look at the cover, and I just pulled it up while we were, you know, talking, while you were talking. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the cover. There they are dressed as Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. 
and next to them are the Beatles dressed in black and dark gray and black dyes like they are now dead. Everybody on yep. that stage <clears throat> yep. behind them is dead at the time sure. of, the, of, the, of the recording. Everybody is dead, including the old Beatles. And so well, if this is not a cultish, sure, what is? What is it saying? They're dead, but they're not really dead. It, they mm-hmm. live on through us, through our music, through our words and lyrics. And all the flowers look like it's for a funeral wreath. You got it, because it is, but it's not. They're, they're alive in the sense that they're saying we're channeling them. Mm-hmm. We're bringing them back. That's been going on now since yeah. the sixties, for sure. There were seventy uh, people behind them, and if you count them, and uh, you know, the only the only the four costume Beatles as the live bodies in the picture. Everybody else is dead. Yeah, there's a there's a ten hour film um, by a Christian man called Rock and Roll Sorcerers of the New Age Revolution. It's in CD now or DVD. I would highly suggest people watch it from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Rock rock and roll sorcerers of the New Age Revolution. That is um, out there and it is unbelievable. It puts all these things together, shows you everyone from the doors to you name it. We're channeling lyrics as well as spirits, even Mm -hmm. Elvis Presley, to be honest with you. So you've got to take a look at that. But my friend Ralph Sarchi, which I hope at some point maybe you can get him on the show. He'd be somebody who could really fill you in on uh, things he's experienced in exorcisms with with the priest and so forth. That's what he wrote about. And he wrote about as a cop in New York walking the beat. Yeah. What he saw and how he saw the demonic. And it wasn't just a few kids playing around thinking they were Satanists. This is the real McCoy. Yes. It really is out there. Well, let me tell you, I've encountered it and some others have, but it's becoming more prevalent, widespread, and it's real and it's evil and it will target Christians and already is. And I want to throw something at you before we run out of time on this program, and we're going to get into this even more tomorrow, because one of the things that stands out to me, what is the one sin that we can get ourselves involved with so readily, much easier than any other, and try to justify it for whatever reason? That is our sexual sins. Mm-hmm. And yep. And what is what is the occult, and and those that are what I what you know literally the New Agers? What are they deeply into? Yep. Look yep. at the look at you know look Free at the love. Epstein's of this world. You know. Sure. I mean, and well, that's they, and that's even with the children, right? And the trafficking. And absolutely. The Ch- but, child know, trafficking is a real thing. It is yep. real, people. Oh and, yeah. And there are people involved in high levels of government that are involved with this and don't oh yeah the mainstream media <laughs> pizza gate oh come on that's a crock no there's because reality. they're involved with it themselves that's why yes, they are and that's part of the skeletons in the closet right you know look crowley himself you know with his do what thou wilt you know is yeah uh, is and the book of law all this stuff is is telling you if it feels good, don't care what anybody says, just plain do it. It doesn't, you know, he was into everything from yoga to tantric sex to you know, the lost arts of magic and everything. I mean, as I'm looking at his life, you know, he's addicted to heroin. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, and yet he was the one that, that set up, you know, if the, if the entire, you know, he died, what, in 47 Within, you know, that by the time you get to 1957, we have the beginnings, the real beginnings. The rock, well, look, look, there's always some contemporary songs that I think are about as innocent as, you know, The Driven Snow, you know, Mr. Postman and all that kind of stuff. They're just songs of our day. But there always were songs that seem to creep in that are actually kind of creepy and we don't realize it. You betcha. And, So these things, according to Aleister Crowley, who said after he would die that, you know, the age of Aquarius (laughs) would come. We know that from the 60s. And it did. You betcha. betcha. A new age is coming, he said. And and he was pushing for that even back in the 40s and the 30s. Sometimes I wonder if it's not if it's not the power of Satan that keeps the uh, group, the Rolling Stones, up and running. (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't know, but Keith Richards, man, if this if this pandemic doesn't get him 
<laughs> We're, it's unbelievable how know, he keeps going. I, I mean, look, I'm looking, I look at, well, I, for example, one of the Rolling Stones hits, you know, Sympathy for the Devil, I remember it, mm-hmm. and, and, and yep. so many others that are equally as bad. I mean, they were creeping in 55 and 60 years ago. That's a long time. Hey, look, Mick Jagger said every time they played that song, something happened. Mm-hmm. Whether it was somebody got killed, a riot broke out in the concert, something happened where somebody either got killed or hurt. Uh, he said every time we played that song. You know, you know, I'm looking at something that he writes, you know, about the song. And Jagger sings this classic, per, you know, first person narrative of Satan talking about the crucial points in history from the crucifixion of Christ, the Russian Revolution and the Nazi Blitzkrieg. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and even Robert Kennedy's, you know, the Kennedy deaths. Yep. And, and now, you know, it's, it's it's all me. I've been there. My, and Lucifer is my name. You've known me by all these other names. We know him by more than one name. We're going to run out of time real quick on, on this program. And I, I and we're going to get into this tomorrow. To me, this this is some scary stuff. We can talk about the coronavirus. We've done plenty of that. We're not going to do it tomorrow. We just, you know, and I know. It is a dangerous virus to some, but it's not as deadly as they said. Uh, they keep moving the goalposts. We know that. And and we also understand that, you know, the philosophy uh, that's been out there since the Clinton era, never let a good crisis go to waste, has been well played on this one. Notice the people that say you can't work are still getting their paychecks. You know, they never, they government never goes without, but you could lose everything. So, I mean, it, it's scary. But we look at the lives. We, we look at where this world is going today. And, you know, where do, where do you think we need to pick up tomorrow? I think we need to pick up on this very theme. We, we looked at the rock and roll music. But what we're talking about is the mystery of iniquity that is slowly and now quickly revealing itself as we cycle further and further toward the season of Antichrist. Dr. Gales, we're going to have to leave it here for today because we're going to be running out of time, and I don't think we we have enough time left to to get into any kind of a new topic. There truly is evil in this world. There's no doubt about it. That's one of the reasons we do this program, Truth to Ponder. We have a an elite media that refuses to fully share the truth to take news stories, bend them and twist them like they did back in the days of Pravda. Funny, Pravda means truth in Russian. But it was nothing that was really truthful in what they had to say. It was a distorted media. We live in a world of a distorted media trying to influence you and the world around us. You can laugh all you want at the concept of people being elitist, having power and dominion over you. We can look at this current pandemic, the ups, the downs, the good news, the bad news. Seems like every time we get good news, there's some more bad news to keep us scared and in fear. People running around, covering their face in fear, putting on a face shield in fear. And they'll look at you, oh, you just don't understand. Then explain to me why people that are wearing face shields and masks and are living in some of the most shut down conditions are where the virus seems to spread the worst. Yeah, I know it's a, it can be deadly for some people. A lot of things can. But somehow I I believe that this pandemic, I'm beginning to lean, I lean more toward a plan-edemic, that when this got out from China, whether by intent and design or by accident, it was manipulated from day one and used against the free world, period. We'll get into that probably more maybe next week. There are things about that I'm reading that are that are disturbing. But I look at Nashville, the the situation there, and I, I feel that there's a lot of truth that's not coming out. And I'm very cautious about speculating. I want to, before our time runs out, I want to share a couple of quick thoughts. Tomorrow begins a new era here at uh, Truth to Ponder. We're adding a radio station 
out of California. This is another shortwave station. We're going to try for a month or two to see how well this works to reach into Texas, which we really don't get into currently with our shortwave. Uh, The Caribbean, Florida, another part of the southeastern United States that the current signals seem to miss. And I really hope and pray to find maybe additional ways of covering all of the U.S. and Canada, Caribbean, and other parts of the world as well. The station is KVOH. The frequency will be 9975 kilohertz, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific on 9975 kilohertz. We're looking forward to that. Airtime is not free. If you can help in any way, would you consider a gift to this ministry? You can go to our website, truth2ponder.com. You can make a gift there directly or by mail. You can mail it to me at 21 Berkshire Lane, number 263. 21 Berkshire Lane, number 263 in Sky Valley, Georgia, 30537. That's 30537, and you can make the gift payable to Ancient Word Radio. We pick up tomorrow, New Year's Day, with Dr. Timothy Gales as we explore evil in this world and why we as Christians should not be afraid. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's Truth the number two ponder.com truth to ponder shining the light of truth in a darkening world